Hello, everybody. You have been sitting here for a while now and probably getting numb. So let's start with an exercise, all right? OK. So everybody, please, raise your right hand and turn your head to the left. Perfect. Now, in this position, you can smell better than the person next to you. <laughs> but don't worry. You don't really have to. I just want you all to become aware of the smell that is in this beautiful space. There is a theory that all the secrets of how our brain works hide behind the sense of smell. This mysterious and elusive sense affects almost every aspect on our life, and certainly our experience of the world. It is a major component on our sense of taste, and it has wonderful abilities to create and recall memories. It can warn us against danger and affect our mood, and it also has quite a bit influence on our sexual attraction and matchmaking. Among the Amazonian tribe, for example, marriage is allowed only between people with different odors. So think about it. They actually sniffing each other to choose their partners. But why go so far till the Amazon? Let's talk about us here in the Western culture. We are also communicate through our sense of smell, even if you are not aware of doing so. Our bodies release odor that attract potential mate and threaten rivals. I'm not talking about a still louder or Chanel perfume here. I'm talking about sweat, hair, breath, and yeah, all the other smells that you can think of. <laughs> Today, I will take you for a tour through my project called Essence that I started when I was still a student at Bezalel Academy of Art and Design in Jerusalem. For me as a designer, the sense of smell is so abstract and different from the, the tactile material that I used to work with. And the fact that it's not being used in my field led me to dive deep into the nostrils to find the essence of the sense of smell. As a designer, my work is not only to give shape and color to objects, but also to observe, explore, ask questions, and identify needs. So the first question I asked myself was, what is my own smell? Have you ever tried to smell yourself? <laughs> to know your real bodily odor? Because most of the time, we are covered by a mask of odor. We're using many substances to eliminate our natural smell, including perfumes, aftershave, deodorant, laundry scent, shampoo, body cream, and even scented condoms. <laughs> we are forever trying to eliminate our wild, natural smell as an active human being. Yeah, this is me, <laughs> with a mask of odor. But for that case, I designed this uh, mask. As you can see, it's connected on my nose. <laughs> so it's connected on my nose, and from there, two tubes go to my armpit. Two to my underpants, <laughs> in the front and in the back, <laughs> and one to my leg. Trust me, not for the faint of heart. But actually, the first 15 minutes with this mask, nothing really happened. But then at one point, all the smells came up together directly to my nose. <laughs> <sighs> oh, God, you couldn't believe how smelly it was. And how many different types of odors we spread out of our body. I walk around with this mask for three days. <laughs> but after a while, when I recovered from being shocked by my own smells, I started to notice some nuances. I found that my body odor is dynamic and changed depending on my activities and even on my mood. So that was actually the first time in all my life that I taught myself to smell something. At this point, two things began to happen. First, I thought maybe I'd prefer not to smell. After all, it was quite a hard experience. 
And second, I started to think whether or not we can teach smells, just as I started to teach myself. And if we can learn smells, I thought, why can't we train our sense of smell, just like we train our muscles? Maybe we can teach ourselves to smell danger or fear or other emotions. So I developed this uh, concept tool <laughs> about smell, smell navigation. So by sniffing the danger, you can navigate the safest route for you. It actually helps you to recognize the smell of danger, and then you, you can avoid it. I also started to think about uh, develop smell amplifier. <laughs> Imagine being able to, sl to smell for long distance or detect previously undetectable odors. <laughs> Now, after we've talked about a world full of rich experiences, let's try to change our point of view. Imagine a world without smell. Think how the world would be without this basic, yet complex, sense and its many stimuli. Think about a world without rich flavors and without human ability to sense invisible danger, like gas leak, fire, or even just burning cake in the oven. Think about not being able to enjoy the smells of blossoming flower, the sea, or the many smells of living forest. And above all else, Think how different your memory would be if they were completely disassociated from any sense of smell. When I began discussing this thought and experiments with others, I realized that there are, there are many people among us who cannot smell, or cannot smell well. How this affects the experience of the world is not trivial. I especially remember a conversation with this anosmic lady who told me that her self-esteem was damaged because of her disability to sense her own body smell. The fear of being smelly next to other people without even knowing it led her to avoid social interaction and to be a lonely teenager. Now let's try something together. In between your seats, every two of you have a small tube like this one. All right, open it carefully, <laughs> smell it, and try to understand what you are smelling. <laughs> Please raise your hand if you smell strong smell. All right. Who did not smell anything? Nice. So what you just smelled now called androstodynon. It's a pheromone found in male sweat. Yeah, I know it sounds disgusting, <laughs> but actually this smell has quite a good influence on us, especially on you ladies. <laughs> it, can, it, can, it can improve your mood and even your sexual desire, but... <laughs> You are lucky, huh? <laughs> But what is more interesting for us is that a large number of people cannot smell it at all, while others find it unbearable. It goes to show that many of us suffer from specific anosmia without even knowing it. However, while anosmia limit or eliminate our ability to sense specific odor, it does not necessarily eliminate the chemical signal transmitted to our brain. That means that even if you cannot smell something, it still affects you in some way. Now keep that in mind. For the next stage of my project, I thought it would be really cool to meet up with one of the most professional smells researchers from Weizmann Institute and show him my stuff. I was sure he's going to kick me out, because honestly, you have seen my smell amplifier. It's cost me 50 cents at a cheap toy store. But then, much to my surprise, he actually loved it and invited me to collaborate. That was a great moment for me. Through our collaboration, I developed several interesting devices. Today, I would like to present you four of them. 
Together with uh, Weizmann's researchers, we developed the main device of this uh, project, the other teaching device. Based on the finding that our olfactory perception is organized by level of pleasantness, we developed a device that would teach anosmic people how to distinguish between pleasant and unpleasant odors by process of biofeedback. The device is based on the premise that we often experience the world to our sense of sight and hearing. So by pairing smell with compatible sound and image, the user can perceive certain feeling to be positive or negative. Let's see how it works. As you can see now, the user gets the smell out of the device, and the computer screen displays the picture and the sound. But let's be more specifically. While emitting a pleasant odor, this picture will be shown with this sound. While emitting unpleasant odor, this picture will be shown with this sound. The colors and uh, the shape were carefully designed based on psychology research to evoke specific emotions, like yellow and stress, and blue and tranquility. The design process was complex and was changed many times. What you see now is the first working prototype, not so attractive as you can see. But I made dozens of models looking for a shape that reflects the many components of the study. I found this, the, the process of learning almost as a meditative process. It required great con concentration and should be cut off from all other stimuli. But on the other hand, it should be inviting and even tempting for the user. So by using all these rules, I designed this device. What you see now is the final product of the other teaching device. It's made out of uh, unique materials that doesn't absorb odor. Its size and weight require from the user to hold it in both hands, thus giving all the attention to the practice process. It communicates with the computer screen by Bluetooth and works only when the user shakes it, thanks to the motion sensor locked inside. All these facts create kind of a ritual that necessarily for this process. As we were developing this device, I thought about the influence that the sense of smell has over us as a living creatures. First, I thought about the ability to create or change social interaction secretly by sense. So I started to develop some tools or jewelries that can harness this power. As you can see, this ring is mounted with a silicon bottle. It can be filled with different odors to create different effects. For example, you can fill it with the smell of sweat to become more attractive to others. <laughs> or with the smell of rosemary, if you would like to sharpen your, scent, your memory. Or just with your tears, lady. And here is a really interesting related fact. Smell of female tears decrease sexual arousal in men. <laughs> so ladies, please, use your teeth wisely. <laughs> As you can imagine, this ring can affect only the wearer and those close to him. But what if we want to attract all potential lovers or influence a large crowd? Imagine a whole crowd around you become extremely positive or incredibly friendly. <laughs> so, so for that case, I designed this lapel pin. It can be used to send small odorous bubbles for long distance to affect large number of people. Let's see how it works. This lapel pin is not that far from an old costume that many of you already know wearing a flower on your breast pocket. Many gentlemen used to wear colorful flower for special occasion, not only for decoration, but also for its scent. It was customary to use specific flowers for weddings and happy occasion, and others for funerals and other sad events. This provided me the inspiration for the last jewelry I'll present here today, the boutonniere. As you can see, it's a small vase made of glass with a small hole for flour. The vase filled with water and thus keep the flour 
and it sends fresh for a long period of time. If you stop for a moment to think about what all this means, it becomes clear that there is enormous potential here to explore the relationship between the brain and various others, as well as some traditional trends that evolve around it, just as using flour for decoration. More remained hidden than revealed in this field. And if all the secrets of how our brain works hide inside the nose, we should expect many more surprises. These days, I'm working on several other projects in fields like food, fashion, and even medicine that use smells to increase the sensory experience and to solve problems. The exchange of knowledge and the collaboration between people from different fields, just as we did, creates new ideas that can change our life. But moreover, I invite you as individuals to be aware of your wonderful abilities. The most powerful tool is just under your nose. <laughs> Explore it. Use it. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.